my background is computer science, uh, so kind of you know finished everything here in Zagreb in Croatia. Did a couple of internships, uh, kind of from more academic projects like in Singapore, Singapore in bioinformatics. Uh, then I was working in one company in Noom, and then actually after university, I started working on you know like projects, startup projects with my twin brother Martin, and you know we kind of held together for the last couple of years. Had one company before we started Wasp, and yeah, Wasp is you know the com the combination of all our experiences. You know, which we had building different web applications and and projects. So yeah, that was about me and just super shortly, you know, about Wasp. <clears throat> so you can think of Wasp as a Rails-like framework for building full stack web apps with uh, Prisma, Node.js, and React right now. So we are you know we are looking to offer that uh, better is included experience, you know, like opinionate the best practices out of the box. You know, we just offer like a lot of building blocks and the glue between your you know, typical custom code, but you can st you still have the full flexibility of uh, writing your own code. So now we are in beta, of course, which is, you know, much more mature with alpha, and we actually have first users in production. Some of them even launch, you know, their SaaS and startups projects, and they are even making money, you know, with their companies uh, built, built on top of us. Yeah, uh, currently there is six of us, including uh, me, me and Martin, so four, four people who, you know, are not, are not uh, the founders. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we went through YC about a year and a half ago, and basically that gave us funding to, you know, widen the team and, you know, get first people on board. Oh, you know, we're we building a developer tool that we would love to use ourselves, you know, be, yes. being developers. I can appreciate, you know, how faster the whole feedback loop is and how easier, you know, it is to get something off the ground. Your intuition is usually, you know, much more, you know, to the point. <laughs> so, yeah, it is just the whole process is kind of much easier, of course. It, it is hard by itself to build a, to build a developer tool, especially a new web framework, but that is another set of, uh, of challenges. So in essence, uh, Wasp is a compiler. You know, it has, a, it, it is a language, although it is not like, you know, competitor to, to Java or C++, you know, it is more like a nice JSON for web apps. So that is maybe the good way to think of it. But, you know, one benefit of this is that Wasp can support multiple frameworks or, you know, even multiple architectures. So right now, you know, we are going with React and Node, but, you know, we could in the future as easily add like support for Vue on the front end, for example, and I don't know, like you can run maybe Python on the backend. So that's kind of, I think we are pretty uniquely positioned to offer that kind of, you know, let's say polyglot abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, we can also offer maybe like, you know, like, you know just kind of have, having the layer of compiler, which understands what you are trying to build with your application. We can pre-generate UI forms for you or even some CRUD operations. Like there is a lot of crazy things we can offer in advance because, you know, we have the kind of, we know what you want from us because you told us in uh, our configuration, you know, questions. So, I mean, this is why we have a Discord community mm -hmm. and this seems to be working pretty well for now. So people usually come in, introduce themselves, you know, ask questions, ask for help, for ideas. So we find that very helpful to learn, you know, what's missing, to discover bugs. But on the other hand, also, you know, kind of to be able to communicate uh, with people who are using it. I wish we would do more. I think there is still a lot of space for progress. But as you said, I think building it in public is uh, super, super powerful, you know, both as motivation for builders and also, you know, just just to get that kind of energy flowing from and between, you know, the people in the community. So, you know, even just having a kind of launch, public launch week, as you mentioned, it kind of makes you accountable because you have to announce what you are going to build. So I think, you know, this makes us decide on features which are going to have the most effect on people who are going to be using it. So, you know, it's, it's very hard to end up, you know, re rebuilding the compiler in Rust because that sounds sexy, you know, like, because like, you know, in three months, nobody will see the difference if that's going to be your feature, which you will release. That's so I think that is one thing, you know, which keeps us accountable to the, to the public, to people we are, about, we are building. And to your question of streaming and, you know, live events. So we had a couple of community calls and we usually do one, you know, next to launch, kind of, hey, get, let's everybody get together. Let's see the new features. And again, always more people come than we expect. You know, even when we were just starting out and, you know, had like a couple of people in our community, we had like 20 people maybe on the call in the end. And we were like, wow, like where are all these people coming from? <laughs> <laughs> so that was really exciting. And yeah, I, I, I just recently had an idea. I would like to start building more in public. Like, you know, just take something every day, maybe post my progress on Twitter and even have some, you know, like Twitch, Twitch stuff. I don't have much experience there yet, but I suspect it could be also pretty, pretty late generator they usually have some marks to kind of mark what is going to be variable in the code what is going to be changed okay so we we ended up using this you know this is our kind of <laughs> symbol for something that has to be changed in the code 
So end user actually kind of never sees it. Okay, in maybe in some parts of the code, you even have to use it when, when declaring like Prisma syntax or something. So there is a little bit of it. But I think we decided on it because it kind of resembled the wasp. You know, if you if you squint enough, like this could be a spike and this could be like kind of maybe wings or something. <laughs> so yeah. it's not it's not super similar, but maybe there is some, you know, maybe there is some similarity. But yeah, we just like we just liked how it looks like and you know it has these developer symbols. So we, we, we just went with it, yeah. Absolutely, it's memorable. <laughs> I just like working with your sibling. Uh, and, you know, I have, I have a cousin. He's 18 years old. He has a brother nice. uh, 16 years old. And, you know, I can picture them in the future building something together, right? So, and there's a lot of people like you guys out there. So what 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 is that like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm happy to share. I definitely recommend, you know, working with your twin brother if you have one. If you don't, <laughs> then make one. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean... I mean, you know, they often say it's kind of unfair advantage to, to work with somebody you know for a long time, like your brother or I don't know, even even wife, if you've been together for, for quite a while, because it takes a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of work maybe that you would have to put into forming a relationship you don't have yet with your co-founder, which is super important. If you already have that relationship built before and now you're just you know, capitalizing on it, that kind of helps you to focus much more on other stuff, which is great. So, you know, just, I mean, of course, it doesn't work every way, every time. And, you know, you have to kind of have a match again with the person you are building with. So, you know, don't, don't just take your brother and force him to do your stuff with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for us, it just kind of naturally worked. You know, Martin was always a bit more, let's say, in the kind of technology side. You know, he was always really good in mathematics and, I mean, at everything on, on that side. And I was always kind of going into, you know, like presentations, uh, you know, writing texts and similar. Although, I mean, we are both developers, but we just had a bit different natural affinities. So, you know, when, when you put us together, you get a pretty oh, good combination. Yes. Yeah, I take care of, you know, like CEO stuff, you know, like pitching, communicating is similar. And he takes care of, you know, making sure everything works. You know, just solving your own problem is always a good start because, you know, the whole feedback loop is much shorter. You know what you're doing. You have intuition. On the other hand, don't be too convinced, you know, because you are just one data point. Make you make sure to get to generalize to get more input as early as possible what you're doing. So I would say second advice, get feedback as early as possible. And especially in open source, when you know there are no kind of patterns, you're not hiding anything, you know, ju just get it out as soon as possible, even with just an idea. Put it on Reddit, make a landing page, ask people, is this a problem for you? So getting feedback as soon as possible and I think, you know, just kind of open source is in its way a superpower because it's much easier to get, you know, public attention. Everybody is, you know, always supporting of open source because you are building for others. You are giving something away. So it's also a responsibility, of course. Like you have to make sure you are transparent. You are taking into account other people's opinions. But I think, you know, if put together and managed well, it can really be, you know, amazing driver for, for your, pro your project. Everything is, you know, public on our on our website or our GitHub repo. So it's wasp-lang.com. You can find all the information there. And if you join our Discord, I think this is the best way to start. You know, just join, introduce yourself, say, hey, I would like to learn more about this and that. And somebody is always there. So we'd be happy, you know, to show you the ropes. And yeah, super awesome to have you in the Wasp community, as we call it.